A very good morning to all the Calnet viewer. 30th of September 2022 is the date today, the last day in the month of September 2022. This is a breakfast show, a show that comes to your screen every morning from 07 hours to 09 hours. We sincerely apologize for starting this program an hour late. This was due to some technical challenges that were beyond our control. But anyway, we will be going on with the program, and we are so excited that you are joining us this morning. We are going to have a fruitful discussion. Remember, there is something important that is happening today, and that is the presentation of the 2023 national budget by the finance minister, Dr. Situmbe Komsokotwane, who was expected this morning to present the budget to parliament. A lot of expectations have been flowing in from different sectors of a society trying to contribute to what they intend to see in the budget. So let's get to hear what you have to say, even with regards to that. I am your host this morning, Prudence Chota, and I will take you through the next hour. And of course, uh, this week is insurance week. Insurance, insurance, insurance. When we talk about insurance, what exactly are we talking about? We will be joined, of course, by a guest in studio and we will be discussing insurance. Remember yesterday, we received a lot of messages with regards to this particular topic. So we assured you that we will bring people in studio to contribute with regards to insurance on this topic. So if you have those questions, keep them coming. You can send them through on our Facebook page or send us a message or you can call and ask the questions that you need to with regards to insurance so right about now we are not going to have our health corner but we're going to look at how is it that our local currency is performing against other major convertibles quacha against other major convertibles where are we at this morning 30th of september 2022 there you have it that is our money market this morning the zambian quacha against the united states dollar is buying at 15 quacha 64 ngwe and selling at 15 quacha 95 ngwe the zambian quacha against the great british pound is buying at 17 quacha 16 ngwe and selling at 17 quacha 49 Ngwe. The Zambian Quacha against the Euro is buying at 15 Quacha 23 Ngwe and selling at 15 Quacha 53 Ngwe. The Zambian Quacha against the South African Rand is buying at 0 0.87 Ngwe and selling at 0 0.88 Ngwe. Zambian Quacha there against other major convertibles. I'm just I'm I'm just thinking to myself. Uh, in the past few weeks, we did see the Quacha perform quite better against the Great British Pound. Maybe due to what is happening in in britain if you've been following their news but we've seen again it has started um uh, depreciating uh, up uh, slightly i don't know what that can be but we are hopeful that our local currency continues to maintain its stability we've seen it being stable for quite some time now this is about three to four months we've had a good currency performance hopefully this is going to continue even as the finance minister dr situmbe komsokotwani announces the 2023 national budget today at 10 hours in parliament so a lot of expectations there keep watching Kamne TV, Parliament TV, and other TV stations to ensure that you know what is happening. Those questions, keep them coming, of course, on the program. Earlier on, I didn't mention that we are looking at insurance. When we talk about insurance, what exactly are we talking about? This is the insurance week. It was running the whole of this week, and I think it will be coming to an end this week. I'm not really sure, but my guests will be able to discuss that in detail. So in studio this morning, I am joined by ZISC General Insurance, um, um, uh, ZISC General Insurance Communications Manager, Penny Fanyarenda. Good morning, and welcome to the program. Good morning, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Of course, Penny Fa is not alone. Uh, she is, of course, Accompanying Mr. Mizinga Masinja. Uh, sir, good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning and thank you very much. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation this morning. We thought we can invite you on this program because yesterday we, called, we got quite a number of questions with regards to insurance. Some of those questions, I will be reading them, that came through and... Uh, one important aspect that came out was someone who wanted to know uh, these number of accidents that we've been receiving in the country. Do those um, is it is there a provision that requires that the bus drivers can be sued and of course compensated for the damages that are caused to that? But I know we will discuss that uh, later on in the program. But maybe let me start with you, Mr. Masinja. When we talk about insurance, what is insurance? Uh, thank you very much. Um, that's a very good uh, you know, question. Mm. So uh, put simply, uh, insurance is really a, a mechanism of um, managing uh, risk 
Uh, but to go further, it would be good that we understand uh, maybe what we mean by the term terminology, you know, risk. So risk uh, is really, in short, the uncertainty of, of loss, or put in another way, risk is uh, the possibility of, uh, you know, an event occurring that will have an impact uh, which may uh, result in somebody not meeting the objective that they have been, um, you know, trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. In a business cycle, uh, we would say when business pe uh, people set up an enterprise, mm -hmm. there's something that they are trying to, to, to achieve there. Mm -hmm. Either they are trying to enhance uh, shareholder value mm -hmm. or maximize on their profit. But at personal level, I would give an example, like say somebody buys a car. Okay. Obviously, then they want to be using uh, that car for their social and domestic aspects, maybe going for work uh, uh, or, or just going for tours and so on and so forth. So uh, there is a possibility that uh, something could happen mm. that could damage that vehicle. So if, if the vehicle is damaged, it means uh, that movement to and from work or wherever they use it uh, will be a problem. So mm. that occurrence is what we call risk. Okay. So, in our daily lives, we are always faced with the risk, regardless of what we are doing, whether it is business, whether it's at social level. Mm. So, there are so many ways of managing risk. And one obvious one is that, uh, so you wanted to go into a business and you realize that, okay, so if I do this, uh, maybe there could be this risk that will happen mm. and I would suffer loss. One way is to just uh, avoid the risk by not even going into that venture altogether. Mm. You, in a way, you have managed the risk. But insurance is a form of managing that risk. So how you manage it is really you transfer the risk. Okay. Instead of you facing that financial consequence of that loss, you are transferring it to your insurer. So what happens is as we, as people or companies are buying insurance, all they are doing is that they are buying financial security mm. just in case that they are faced with a loss because they have paid a premium to an insurance company. The, the insurance company will make good of their loss. So uh, to try and put it simple, mm. I will use the same example that I used you know, earlier. So you've bought a vehicle and you have insured it, say, comprehensively, mm. implying that uh, should you be involved in an accident, then obviously your insurance company will have to foot the bill of repair mm. of, of, the, of the motor vehicle, if, it, if at all it's repairable. But if it's a total loss, then the insurance company will give you money so that you are able to, 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 to buy or replace that vehicle that, uh, that you have lost. Mm. So in a nutshell, really that is what it is. Insurance is just a risk management uh, you know, tool. It's one of those risk management. So you transfer risk, but you have to bear in mind that you will transfer, you have to pay premium mm. to an insurance company. And I think that I want to stress on this because sometimes we find ourselves uh, you know, in a situation where, yes, somebody has bought insurance mm. and uh, maybe have said, uh, I don't have uh, cash to pay upfront. Okay. And, and of course, we want to work within the cash flows of our clients. Mm. And we do allow terms. So we will say, okay, so you may pay us uh, monthly installments of up to say three months. Mm. There are times that uh, you find clients have paid the first installment and have defaulted on, on the second and third installment. Mm. So obviously uh, the consideration there, that contract is being violated. So to ensure that uh, you, you, you get benefit from your insurance, your part as a client is to make sure that you pay the premium as you have agreed, mm. you know, with, uh, with your insurer. I know we are going to come to that because questions come up when it comes to paying insurance, uh, the risks, of course, that we take by paying insurance and stuff like that. But before maybe we exhaust everything that we have to say, we are looking at insurance week this week, uh, of course. Uh, it is ending today. Maybe, Penny, if I, let me throw this to you. When we talk about the insurance week, what are we talking about? So thank you so much for the insurance week. It mm. was basically a creation to help increase awareness mm. on issues of insurance. We are aware that um, the information out there is very limited when it comes to the insurance subject. Mm. And uh, because of that, we, we base that uh, uh, understanding on the insurance penetration levels in our country, which mm. remain relatively low. I think it stands at around 6% at the moment. Uh, going by uh, statistics shared by our uh, Insurers Association and PIA. So 
Because we know the value of insurance, we would like as many uh, members of our country or members of society rather to understand how helpful insurance is. Mm. From the scenarios that Mr. Massinger has explained, you will find that at the point when an incident happens, you will need to find financial support for you to get back to where you were. But that's the reason why insurance comes into the picture. Mm. So instead of you appearing on TV saying, Bo my younger neighbor to help me with something that may have happened, and mm. those are the common incidents that we see, um, maybe somebody's house is burnt, mm. or you know, there's so many calamities that before us. Mm. Without insurance, it means you have to source that money on your own, or you go in the begging board to your friends and relatives so that they can help you get back to where you were. Instead, insurance comes into the picture. Okay. So this year marks 10 years of the insurance week. And this week is dedicated to increasing sensitization or awareness when it comes to the insurance subject. All industry players play a part in uh, conducting different activities during this week, which are all dedicated to increasing uh, sensitization. Yeah, thank you so much for that explanation. In case you're just tuning in to Kamne TV, this week is Insurance Week and it is, of course, uh, where we, they raise awareness on insurance. But a lot of people have had questions with uh, the subject of insurance. What really is insurance? And that is what this particular interview is about. In case you're just tuning in to Kamne TV, we are discussing insurance and, of course, this is the Insurance Week. And in studio today, I am joined by ZISC Director Branch Operation, Mr. Mizinga Masinja, and of course, ZISC General Insurance Communications Manager, Penifa Nyerenda. And um, maybe before I come to you, Mr. Masinja, uh, Ms., Ms., um, uh, Mrs. Nyerenda, we, when we hear insurance, there is um, a confusing part when we talk about general insurance and when we talk about life insurance. Because we hear uh, adverts and someone will be saying, is this life insurance? And tomorrow you hear, is this general insurance? And I get confused because what is life insurance? Is this not one thing we're talking about? So what is the difference between life insurance and general insurance? Thank you so much. So that question is actually very important mm. uh, because it's one of the fundamental elements that helps one to know what kind of insurance they need. Mm. So general and life insurance are very different. Uh, life insurance is long term in nature and general insurance is short term. By that you will be able to uh, basically apply it in the things that, uh, in the products that we offer as life and general insurance companies. From our end as a general insurance company, we offer uh, as I said, short-term products mm. that basically are renewed after a certain period of time. It okay. could be a quarter, it could be annually, and the products that we insure are your assets. It could be your motor vehicle, your uh, house, and if you remember from some of the things we were discussing yesterday, mm. we're looking at things like the actual building, mm. it can be the contents in the house, and it can also include um, things like, uh, uh, if it's a business, you are looking at... Uh, uh, the computers, mm. the, the, the building itself, uh, things that I would call tangible assets mm. in, in the most basic terms. But when it comes to life insurance, it's long term, as we already mentioned, and it requires you to save over a period of time. Mm. For example, we've got pension funds, you can save for education if you'd like to uh, save money for your child, for them to either benefit from a secondary school package, or even uh, university education. So you can save for as many as maybe 15 years from the time that your child is born, you save funds that will go towards your child's education and that falls within the um, uh, life insurance package. Mm. So in terms of claims, the, the way you claim when, you're, when you have a, a life product and when you have a general product, they are somewhat different. You get support, quite all right, but when it comes to general insurance, our support mechanism is such that if your car is damaged, we will fix that vehicle. Mm. If your house uh, breaks down because of uh, maybe a storm or something is destroyed, we will help fix that vehicle, that house because you get compensation according to the value that you have insured that property for. When it comes to life insurance, you wait for the period at which your uh, submissions or your policy would have actually matured and you get that money back for you to pay for whatever it is that you are uh, saving up the money for. 
often we have a mix up in people understanding oh, of course their lives, <laughs> and general insurance yeah. mm. and who would actually receive maybe concerns or claims that don't actually sit with us because people would be thinking oh you're the ones who are managing this uh, this kind of claim mm. but we are, we do understand that we need to increase sensitization when it comes to the basic difference and this is not something that we created as insurers it's actually based on the law the law does not permit an insurance company to run both the life and general side of it. Hence, having, if you've noticed, most of the companies have a life and general uh, section. Wow. <laughs> we didn't know actually that that is a law. I'm just getting to learn about it to say an insurance company cannot be both general insurance and life insurance. Interesting there. Let's talk about the different type of insurance that we have. Mr. Massinger, I think you can come in. The different type of insurance that we have in this country. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, that's a very good uh, you know, uh, uh, question. Uh, so from the general insurance side, uh, we have a number of uh, uh, products mm. that range from, um, in the general sense, motor insurance. Mm. Uh, we have fire insurance. Then we have accident uh, insurance. We have marine insurance. We have agriculture you know, insurance. So under fire insurance, uh, really uh, the issue there is that we have products that will protect uh, either an organization or an individual for losses that they may suffer, um, which are caused by, by fire, mm. uh, which are caused by lightning, mm. which are caused by ex explosion, flood, malicious uh, you know, damage. And um, we will be looking at things like, um, um, say for, for, for a production entity, you'll be looking at uh, um, a, you know, the buildings, the structures they are do, doing production from. Mm. Uh, you will be look, looking at their stocks, the ones that they are, they are producing, your equipment and plant that they are using you know, to, 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 to produce. Mm. Uh, those could be damaged by fire and the other aspects that I have, have, have indicated. Mm. Uh, at personal level, um, obviously, you, you still have what we call um, home, home, home auto, I, I think for ZISC. Um, so that will mean that, as you have seen, I think there's been a drive for empowerment in Zambia. A lot of uh, people have bought, uh, you know, uh, their, their residential, you know, houses. Uh, so you, you, you can pick up uh, what we call uh, home auto, obviously, which, will, which would ensure, you know, the residential dwelling, uh, including the, the contents. And also, if they have motor vehicles, those will be covered there. Mm. Uh, so under accident insurance, we have what we call burglary and theft. Um, you see that um, when people are producing stocks, before all of it is, is, uh, is sold, it's kept maybe in a, wa a, a warehouse. Mm. Um, and um, there could be um, a, an occasion where uh, thieves break into that warehouse and steal you know, their, 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 their stocks mm. or even equipment. So that, that burglary insurance will obviously compensate for, 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 for such... Uh, for such losses. Uh, under accident as well, we, we have what we call money cover. Um, this is a cover that is available to, 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 to cover the insured against loss of money mm. uh, while it's, it's in transit or while it's at their premises. And of course, a bit of money uh, maybe will be with the directors of the company as they go to do other you know, business transactions and, 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 and collectors. Mm. Uh, of course, we do guide our clients that uh, when they are going to carry money mm. beyond a certain amount, it requires that they arrange for security, okay. uh, which is just uh, a prudent. Because we see these days sometimes people, you go in a, in a bank and thieves are watching you and they've seen that you've withdrawn, you know, huge uh, sums of money uh, and they begin to to follow you so it's it's good to improve that risk by just getting um you know security there uh we have what we call marine insurance obviously um when you um say you have an out, you have outlets spread all over the country mm. uh, and then you are supplying goods you will be involved in making sure that uh, from the production point you are then moving your goods uh to those points to the several outlets where you're going to sell from, uh, it is possible that there could be an accident, you know, while you are distributing, you know, those goods. Um, insurance will offer, you know, a cover for those. If they are lost while they are in transit or damaged, uh, you will get compensation, you know, uh, for that. 
Um, there are a number of products, I think, that, uh, which also enhance like employers. Mm. We have group personal accident. Uh, this primarily is, is, is a cover that you give you know, to an employer you know, so that uh, if their employees are injured, or indeed, uh, the worst, uh, if it came to the worst, they die whilst, uh, you know, they are actually, you know, doing their duties. Um, there will be, uh, you will have agreed amounts to say that uh, uh, if somebody dies, which is the worst case scenario, uh, you will pay, say, three times their annual salary or four times their annual salary, you know, that has to be agreed. Mm. Or maybe they are just, they, have, they haven't died, but they are permanently disabled okay. uh, and may not continue to work. Uh, so there will be covers that you can use. Uh, so, which is one of them, group personal accident, uh, that would come to, to, to help. But of course, even at micro, uh, micro level, we, we have uh, micro insurance you know, products. So insurance really, because also there's this notion mm. uh, that insurance is for the elite. So, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. When just hear, even when I was growing up, when I just hear the word insurance, mm. I just used mm. to think this is just for big companies. Yeah. People who do yeah. big companies mm. or who have a lot of stock and they are at risk. Or people who do risk business. Mm. Most of the time, mm. that's what mm. we think. Okay, right. No, 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 no. I think let's correct that, uh, that misconception. Mm. Uh, insurance cuts across the board. Mm. Yes, we agree that... Uh, Zesco will pick up insurance, KCM will pick up insurance, all those big, you know, entities. Mm. But insurance is also for the small scale, you know, business people, the small scale, you know, farmers who are out there, mm. you know, doing their own, you know, growing crops maybe on an acre. Mm. Uh, insurance will, will, will deal with that. Mm. Yeah, so uh, uh, we have products that are tailor-made for you know all the, the 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 sectors you know in in the in the economy so we really want to invite everyone uh, to come on board mm. uh, they can approach our company unfortunately for us i think we are represented in all the you know provinces you know of of of, of the country and uh, so we have made sure that we've taken these products right to where the you know the the, the clients are mm. so for those small scale farmers that grow whether it's maize they are growing soybeans those that have um, livestock mm. it doesn't matter whether it's a head of five cattle we will ensure those animals against disease even they are, if they are stolen uh, you know for crops we will ensure against drought mm. we will ensure uh, against excessive you know, um, rainfall and, and some of the selected, you know, pests. Mm. Uh, what you see now, we are going into the growing season. Uh, sometimes because of drought, there will be germination failure. We mm. have products that will respond very swiftly. Uh, and what will happen is that uh, because if there is germination failure, you find that you still have time to replant. Mm. So we have products that will, solutions that will respond so softly, uh, quickly, that you will be given the inputs again and have an opportunity to, to be able to, 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 to plant. So uh, there, there are products for marketeers as well. Mm. Um, so in, uh, uh, we can discuss, you know, in detail. Uh, I, I think that pe people just have to approach our branch network. But what, is, what we want to emphasize mm. is that insurance is really for, for everyone. Mm. small, medium, and large operations. We've heard claims such as insurance companies don't pay the, the claims mm. when clients go to them. And of course, I have a problem. I have a challenge. I was involved in an accident. No, my property was stolen. My house was um, visited last night by an invited guest and they have been finding challenges. They've refused. We've heard complaints such as the insurance company telling someone to say, no, we can't compensate you due to ABCD. So I want to find out as insurance companies, what claims do you pay out or what are the conditionalities that someone has to follow before they can get their claims? All right. Okay, I'll take that. Please do. <laughs> I'll just lay the foundation and mm. I think Mr. Messenger can come in. Mm. Basically, the, like, the, the beginning of the discussion or the answer to that question mm. is what we laid in the foundation. What kind of claim are you submitting? Uh, there are requirements that we will set depending on the kind of claim that you're making. Mm. But one of the things that we've also established is that at the point that people are getting their insurance, they may not fully understand what it is that they're signing up for. Mm. Mm. Especially uh, when it comes to mortar, people will look at the statute, look at, looking at it at a statutory requirement, they'll just get the document without reading through what uh, contract they, they've signed, signed up for. So in this particular case, we are encouraging firstly, uh, our customers to 
understand the product so that they can also understand the claims process. Mm. So in terms of claims, um, like I said, there are specific guidelines that we will give for you to follow. Uh, I, I, I will give an example of uh, uh, motor again. Mm. One of the major requirements that you need to provide a police report uh, will have an assessor, a motor assessor to check uh, the extent of the damage and then we'll be able to tell um, how to uh, value the loss. But before even all of that is determined, at the point that you're securing your insurance, will require you to give what is called the sum insured. So that's the value at which your property has been placed. Now at the point of compensation, reassessment is done. And you need to bear with us when we come to the conditions because we are also mindful that there are people who are fraudulent out there. Mm -hmm. So the reason that the claims process is very strict is so that we don't give chance to people who want to use the uh, insurance industry either for money laundering or just to uh, benefit themselves. One thing you should keep in mind is that insurance is not meant to make you rich. Mm. It is just meant to take you back to where you were before whatever incident happened. Mm. So the claims process is very critical for any insurance company so that we are able to take you back to where we were. If we do not honor that promise of paying you back when you lose a claim, it means we are we are defeating the purpose of insurance and we are not meeting our end of the bargain, our mm. end of the contract. Because insurance is a promise. We are assuring you that if anything happens, we're the ones who will be able to help you out in that situation. But I'll allow Mr. Massinger just to elaborate on the claims process because it's different when it comes to agriculture, uh, motor, and maybe the, the, the business, excuse me, the business packages that uh, he highlighted earlier. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Just to add on to what Penfa had said, mm -hmm. um, there's something that I touched on earlier. Um, uh, you see, you, an insurance contract is that you have bought insurance you know, so that the insurance company can compensate you mm. when a calamity arises from what we may call insured events. Mm. So in your policy document, we have tabulated what exactly we will be covering, what would be the sources of the loss that is insured. Mm. Uh, you heard me earlier when I was talking about fire, I could mention a few things that we, if there is damage from fire, if there is damage from lightning, if there is damage from explosion, if there is damage from malicious, you know, things like that. Mm. Yeah, so, but I think our clients need not worry because uh, obviously even through the efforts of the regulator, uh, I think we have come now to a point where when a client approaches an insurance company to pick up insurance, mm. uh, the regulator has given guidelines which are more or less mandatory that we must uh, sign out key facts, you know, uh, statements about the cover. So what that means is that uh, the clients must know now that they are entitled before they leave mm. uh, to ask the underwriter, this product that you have sold me, what are the salient features? What is the scope of cover? Mm. And the, the underwriter must explain those things. Mm. There will be other salient things like, you know, as we, uh, we say, either what we call excess or what we call deductible. But you see, this is jargony. Mm -hmm. uh, our clients may not understand that. So we need to break it down. So ideally, we have to explain things like uh, Penifa said, when, a loss, when you are faced with a loss, mm. what do you need to do? So primarily, I think that clients are encouraged that when they suffer a loss, even when they are not sure whether they will claim or not, let them, the first thing is let them notify their insurance company, you know, that have been involved in an occurrence where I have suffered damage. Mm. That is critical uh, because some of the policies will have a time limit within which you must uh, report. This just helps the insurance company to make sure that before evidence is uh, distorted, they get on a scene and, and then will make decisions on how they are going to pay. Uh, the, I was talking about the excess. So when a client suffers a loss, there is a portion of that loss that the client is required to contribute. Mm. So most of the time, I think we ask that 10% uh, of the loss will be borne by the client, while the insurance company will pay 90%. So it becomes necessary that the client knows those things. Because, you see, you will insure your motor vehicle, say, for 100000 mm. and then there's a loss. You are expecting 100000 from the company. Now, if those things are not explained, 
Then you see the insurance company saying, yes, we agree, you've suffered loss to the extent of 100,000, but we are only paying 90,000. Mm. And if there was no explanation, you were, the client was prepared to receive 100,000. So misunderstandings begin to happen right and then. But like I have said, I think now clients can demand before they leave. Uh, whether it's happening virtually, before they sign off that discussion, they must ask, what do I need to know? Uh, like we are saying, our regulator has put that guideline, uh, guideline that the key first facts must be explained. Mm. The important thing is also, you are buying insurance. Ensure that the premiums have been paid as you have agreed. Mm. Because without paying a premium, it means you haven't bought the insurance. That insurance is not effective. Mm. So you really need to, to make sure that... Uh, <coughs> if you've agreed to pay in monthly installments, when those installments are due, you'll pay. Mm. Because then you would expect that the insurance will occur. So I think that in a nutshell, you, you, you make sure your insurance uh, um, premiums are paid. Then discuss with the underwriter or indeed the salesperson or, or the broker. Mm. It would depend on who you are, you are, you are, you are, you are talking to. Uh, that they, they, they are able to tell you what is covered mm. and what is excluded. So that way you will be clear to say, okay, so like if you are driving a motor vehicle, if you gave your vehicle to be driven by somebody who is not licensed or has no driving license, you should expect that uh, your insurance company will not pay that claim. So all those things will be explained at that particular time. Mm. Of course, there's a difference in the sense that it may not pay the damage to the vehicle, but if there are third parties who have been injured, uh, up to the act, the law, that is why we've made motor insurance compulsory, where the law will demand that the third party who has been injured, regardless of whether uh, there's that problem of uh, the driver not having, you know, a driving license, mm. you will still pay up to the limits of the law requirement to only the third party that you have injured or killed. But the damage to the vehicles would not be tolerated. So I think that, that is, those are some of the issues that uh, we really need, to, which must be looked at. And that is where I think that we have these issues where they have said, uh, okay, I took up a, a policy, but when I went to, you know, to claim and, uh, you know, this was not paid. Mm. Uh, apart from the discussion, it, it, do find some time to just go through. Mm. It, it, this is a contract. No, that's, we even have online registration where someone mm. can even buy insurance mm. online. Do you give them guidelines there on the online page before someone can finally say, I agree? Do we have those guidelines by insurance companies where they display the requirements? And then, or maybe people just got to agree, agree, agree without even reading the terms and conditions of the contracts. Do we have that? That's really the risk. That's, that's, that's the most common complication. People will just get it because I need to, today's the 30th, the quarter is ending, mm. tomorrow I don't want to be in trouble with the police. So they'll just uh, get the insurance in a hurry without really reading uh, what is tabulated. So your cover note has uh, the terms and conditions of your cover indicated. I don't even know if many people even check that there's even time indicated, the time at which you bought the insurance is actually tabulated on that document. And the time element, like was mentioned, is part of your, your contract. Mm. If, uh, if, if you bought insurance at a particular, on a particular date and it runs for a particular period, it will only run for that, for that period. Anything outside that, it means you don't have cover. Because uh, we've had people who would come and say, I've uh, had insurance for 15 years or for three years or for two years. Unfortunately, the day that it expires, like maybe a day like today, the following day before you can get a new contract, a new policy document, mm. you find yourself in an accident and you come back and say, but then I had paid uh, for, you know, it was expiring yesterday, today is when the incident has happened. Unfortunately, it would have expired. It's a contract. It's a legal document. It's binding on both parties. Mm. And it brings me to another factor, which mm. perhaps as you deal with, uh, which I'd, I'd like also Mr. Messenger perhaps to come in when it comes to people who have the misconception that insurance companies will not pay your claims mm. instead they're just keeping your money um, i think we've encountered that that discussion that kind of discussion so of course I, I don't know about you but mm. from our end we get people asking but uh, 
I never had a claim. So what happens to the money that I pay? Mm. I've been paying and the year has ended. I've never had an accident or maybe my house has never been burnt before and stuff like that. So the year has ended. Why are you not giving me back the money? Mm. So let's get to hear what you have to say with regards <laughs> to that. Why don't you give back people their money? Or even half of that for saying, okay, you're a good driver, so we are giving you half of what you insured your property with. Okay. I will allow Mr. Massinger to explain it. Of course. <laughs> All right. No, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think we, we have to understand how insurance you know, works. Mm. So when you are buying insurance, you are basically buying a peace of mind. Mm. You are basically buying a promise that should you suffer loss mm. uh, from incidents that uh, have been uh, you know, named, you will definitely uh, uh, be comp compensated. So we, we've given you a facility. Uh, so basically the insurance company is on cover. Mm. Now, the way to understand that is that the way the mechanism works is that we are picking premiums uh, from a number of people. Uh, but what to understand is that not all those people will suffer, you know, accidents. Mm. But there will be some people out of that group who are going to, to suffer accident. And that is why you see that when you come to insure your asset, uh, so say even for like a house, uh, so a number of people will come to insure their residential houses. Maybe they are worth, uh, let me use this example, like say uh, one million in a quarter. Mm. That is the value of the house. You will find that there, the premium you could be paying may just be four hundred and um, you know fifty, you know, you know thousand. Uh, I'm, I'm just giving that as an example. Mm. Yeah. So, say hundred people come uh, and, and 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 insure. So you will be saying if they are paying four fifty, uh, you multiply that by 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 hundred by, by hundred. Mm. Um, maybe to come to I, I don't have a calculator whether it will be four thousand something. Mm. Now one of their houses is completely burnt and we are uh, you are asking the insurer to pay actually one million kwacha you will see that even the contribution mm. of those hundred people is not even equal to the value of just one house which is uh, insured so the principle of insurance is that uh, we we pull resources together and from that pool the unfortunate few who have suffered loss will be paid from the contributions of the unfortunate uh, the fortunate many who have not suffered no loss. So that is really how it works. So we are pulling resources to make sure that from those people that have come on board who have contributed, those that will be unfortunate, mm. from them simple they will they will, they will be compensated. But you may not suffer a loss uh, that particular year. You may find that the following year you are the one that has suffered the, you know, the loss. But you see, like the example that I've given, most of the time, f just from pulling, the resources are not enough to pay losses. So what insurance companies will do is to try and also invest the funds. And, and, and that investment is done in a scientific way that uh, you are trying to match the anticipated liabilities that are coming from the risks that you have picked mm. so that there will be enough resources as and when you know the liabilities occurs so but what to understand is really that uh, insurance is about pulling resources from that pool there will be some that will suffer loss and those who are fortunate who didn't suffer will contribute but that is why then it becomes interesting that uh, you know like Penfa was saying mm. uh, we, we normally will ask a few questions here and there because there are some people that uh, may be fraudulent so it's unfair that uh, from the pool where everybody has co you know, contributed, mm. you want to be paid when you, the money is really not due. You are defrauding the other mm. you know, people that are contributing. So we have to be responsible that in the way that we manage you know, the fund. So that if when we are making a payment, it will be a payment that is within the you know, confines of, of the policy documents. But I think that what we have known, knowing that there is... Um, less understanding of our products mm. and that is why i think we are happy that you've been able to host us mm. you know today because we need to explain you know so that our clients understand these things i think the more that our clients are made aware of the products uh, it's better um, uh, for for the insurance companies and the better for them you know mm. like i said to manage you know those uh, risks so we will continue to make sure that uh, at every opportunity that we get 
uh, obviously working with uh, institutions like yourselves mm. because really I think that you are playing a key role uh, without the media uh, our personal efforts can only cover two. If, I, if we are going out there to see how many clients, we may cover five with ten clients, mm. but we can imagine how many, your viewership, how many people are watching this program. And, and, and mm. so we, we really want to thank the media. I think that they have come on board to, to help us to disseminate. We are hoping that we can move. Um, there is an insurance uptake. It sits somewhere around 2% now. Mm. So if we can get it to a level where it's sitting to somewhere around more than 10%, I think even our contribution to GDP uh, will be more relevant, uh, uh, I think, to the country. Okay, very quick addition. Is yes, that, please. Uh, for those who may not have encountered any incidents, mm. uh, we do have something that they get uh, as a reward for their failure to, I mean, for their for them not claiming anything in that particular, area, and we call that a no claim discount, mm. and that runs for a period. And if you ask certain people who've been on our books for well over ten years or so, you find that they are paying very minimal premium because they've enjoyed this no claims discount the point that it has reached a limit because there's a minimum threshold that you have to pay for your for your cover so with each passing year there will be no will be knocking off 15% uh, 15% up, yeah, up, so up to 60% percent for more time so you find that if you if you originally were paying uh, uh, say 8000 kwacha mm. as we keep knocking off the 15% without you claiming you have to you you find yourself paying only 60% of the initial Eight thousand at the point that you reach uh, the uh, the final point at which you can enjoy that that uh, that discount. Mm -hmm. So there is a benefit when you actually don't claim, and it should not be misunderstood that there's nothing at all. Maybe just an addition to that: when you say you have to pay your premium, a lot of people misunderstand the word premium because there the, are the terms that people use, such as premium. Maybe premium is why you have to insure a lot of money. Or maybe when they say you pay an amount, that's where you have to pay a small amount. So just maybe try to add a little bit of salt or sugar to the discussion. When you say you pay a premium, what do you really mean for someone who's learning about insurance for the first time? Okay. So really, uh, yes, that's a terminology that we use as, as insurance people. Mm. That is really just the money mm -hmm. that a client is paying you know, to an insurance company in exchange of the financial security. Uh, that guarantee that the insurance company is giving that if you suffer a particular loss which is insured, then we will compensate. So that money, like I said, uh, it doesn't matter what the amount is. Mm. It, it depends on who we are dealing with. Like I said, there's insurance for small uh, businesses, for mm. small scale farmers. So uh, for those, uh, the insurance uh, may as well be as low as uh, 200 kwacha. Wow. It will still be called a premium. Mm. Uh, if we are talking to Zesco, uh, we are talking to Mopani, uh, and we are talking, say, to the Chinese contractors who are maybe working on Kafue Gorge Lower, mm. that premium may as well be $6 million, but it's still a premium. So uh, let them not even get confused with the terminology. It's just the money that they are paying to Whether buy. it's a 200 or it's 1 million, it it's just, a premium. It is a premium. Of course, the concept of premium comes with the connotation that this money should be paid up front. Mm. Okay? Uh, really, that is what uh, uh, the, the, the premium uh, you know, denotes. But uh, because, obviously, we also understand the, the markets that we are operating in, uh, that uh, sometimes um, you know our clients may not be able to to, to, to do that. Uh, that's why sometimes we agree in you know, our terms. Mm -hmm. I know that even within Africa there are ju jurisdiction jurisdictions where insurance is really cash and carry. You know, like you're going to shop right, mm -hmm. and and and, and to, you want to buy bread or you want to buy whatever. You don't go there and start saying, okay, that will come tomorrow and pay. So you just pay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is where it comes from when you say premium. But like I said. I think we also want to work uh, within the cash flows of our clients. But uh, I think, honestly, we we'll repeat this because it is important. When uh, we have given terms, uh, obviously there will be an agreement that is signed. Mm. It becomes important for our clients to ensure that uh, premium is paid based on the agreement. We also have flexible you know, products like... Um, Pay as you go. 
therefore so for those that uh, may not like Penfa was saying mostly our insurance products would be tailored to to cover 12 months mm. but because we realize that sometimes uh, money is hard to come by we have come up with a product that we call pay as you go mm. so if you only have at that particular time when you buy insurance you only have money that can buy cover for three months uh, we will all come on board it, buy that cover for three months it means then you start running around doing whatever you do to generate more income so that will improve your cash flow so obviously after three months you'd have generated a bit again you can come back mm. get another three months or six months depending on what you're managing so we are innovating around what customers can afford we want to give clients products mm. that can respond you know to their you know their their situations so there's a lot that is going on around innovation. Of course, I, I, I think that we are also leveraging, like you had said earlier, on uh, um, um, ICT mm. uh, to ensure that we, are, we deliver products uh, that clients may not necessarily have to come you know, to our offices. Now, uh, we, we, as Zisk General, we can confirm that we have got the, a set of the art ITC, ICT system mm. where clients can log in you know, through the client's portal and, and be able to buy uh, some of these uh, not so complicated, you know, products, you know, like motor, uh, you know, like householders and, 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 content, and contents. And uh, the pricing will be indicated there and uh, they can get uh, the product and, and be able to print mm. uh, and pay online. Yeah, of course, there are other, those that are dealing with complicated, you know, products. I think it becomes critical that... Uh, I think they get advice. They, mm -hmm. they will need to be guided through the process because there will be things that they may not understand. We, we work with the brokers as well. Mm. Uh, and we work with agents, you know, as well. So they may, for some of the products, I think there's nothing wrong in, uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, consulting even a broker uh, who will then place the cover with us. But uh, the broker is also an expert mm. in insurance. So they will be able to give the necessary advice, I, I think, to a client. Okay, I'm tired of my vehicle and, oh, I have, of course, insured. So let me just cause an accident or maybe let me just hit into a tree so that the insurance company can buy me a new vehicle because this one is giving me quite challenges. How do you work to investigate uh, the clients that you sometimes give uh, a back or the, the, the ones who you give the claims to mm. their properties. How do you work to establish what was the cause behind the accident that led to that? Or you give claims to anyone who comes to claim them? Okay. Um, obviously, insurance operates under certain principles. Mm. Um, so I will not maybe go deep, I mean, to list everything, but we expect that our clients will act with utmost good faith mm. uh, we are expecting that clients will definitely be uh, people of um, of integrity mm. um, so um, it, it it speaks to the question that you asked earlier mm. what are some of the claims that may fail mm. uh, from where we are sitting uh, as underwriters mm. or indeed as risk general I think that uh, first our perception is that uh, we are there to pay claims, mm. okay? I, I, and I think that our clients need to get this, that we are in this business to pay claims. So when a client is faced with a, a calamity, it's not our presupposition to start looking for ways to avoid, mm. you know, the claim. No, we will be looking forward to seeing how we can assist our client. Mm. It to get a payout so that, uh, like Penfa said, they can be in that position that they were uh, before the, the loss. Now, for motor insurance, uh, you will see that, obviously, if there's an accident, the police are involved. Mm. Uh, so you have got road traffic who will definitely get on the scene and uh, they will do their job. And they will issue out a report. So, obviously, they will pick out those angles <laughs> where the, um, mm. there was something that the client did uh, that was intentional. Uh, for for, for, for non-motor you know, claims, we have what we call loss adjusters. Mm. Uh, so these are experts also who work in the insurance field. We will ask the, a service uh, uh, from them and they will also move in to just do an investigation. Mm. If uh, the damage was caused by fire, you, you know that the fire brigade uh, will be involved. So all these are institutions that we use. 
and in trying to assess um, in trying to assess um, you know the loss or the circumstances that are, are leading to, to, to the loss. So uh, during that uh, assessment period and investigation period, uh, sometimes we do get the, these facts coming out that actually our client is trying to lodge in a fraudulent claim. Mm -hmm. Remember these claims are supposed to be accidental. So that is why it is the duty of our clients, even when they have picked up insurance, to behave as though they are not insured. That is very, very critical. So I, I, I don't see how, uh, if you have no insurance, you're going to bash you or go and rub, deliberately ram your vehicle into mm. something else and start you know, getting money from your pocket to buy another vehicle. So that is why we expect clients to really behave as though they are not insured. Mm. So if we find out you know, that uh, the claim was not accidental, it was actually intentional, obviously uh, we are going to throw out uh, that claim. And I think that uh, even by law, then uh, you are trying to defraud uh, the insurance company. Uh, there may be other issues where the police also may be, you know, involved. So um, we we are helping you for unforeseen, you know, situations that mm. are accidental. Mm. Uh, if your vehicle has done its time. I think they uh, do not create a misfortune, mm. uh, you know, to try and replace uh, because you may <laughs> lose. Uh, so that is really what it is. But there is a question here. I'm trying to go through just to see some questions. I think that's why we are having a pop up of some sound. And we have a question from Wadia Melu here who says, Can Bwana Muzinga speak to and explain the reassurance factor in insurance? Insurance company also insure against risks. So Melu here, Mr. Wadia Melu wants to find out about this issue. Right. Okay, so yes, uh, there is reinsurance. Mm. Uh, so that is what we, we, we call it. Um, when a, an insurance company is set up, mm. obviously there are capital requirements uh, mm. that are involved in setting up these um, you know, insurance companies. And uh, insurance companies will pick up risk in relation to the capital that they have. Mm. Uh, so you will find that there are certain risks that uh, an insurance company will want to write, but they don't have sufficient capital to keep the whole risk. Mm. So when those situations happen, that is where we have a second layer of what we call, so there's insurance companies where we're operating from, then there are reinsurance companies which are sitting at a second layer. So these are companies that in simple terms, insure insurance companies. Okay. Now, to put it simply, uh, say we have Zesco approaching us and they want to insure their power generating installations. Mm. And they tell us that, uh, uh, as an example, uh, if, say, Kafue Gorge hydro power plant there was to be damaged the total loss would be something like 200 million dollars mm. obviously uh, there is no company uh, in this in this in this country doesn't matter whether they came to us or whether they went to PICZ or Madison or whoever none of us will have enough capital to cover you know, that loss and keep it for themselves. Mm. Because you can imagine that there is a total loss at that, at that location. Mm. And Zesco comes and lodges in a claim to say, I need to be paid 200 million for me to do the repairs. Mm. We won't have that kind of money. So what then happens is that, uh, yes, we will be able to ensure that, that risk Mm. But we will seek partnerships with the same reinsurers. Oh. We have some reinsurers that are sitting here mm. uh, in Zambia. I think, I don't know, th two or three of, the, of them. So the, the story will start from here. Those reinsurers don't speak to clients. Okay. Yeah, because they are only coming in at second layer level. Mm. So we will pick up Zesco. And, 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 and Zesco shouldn't be, won't be bothered. Zesco must just know Zisk, must mm. just know PICZ, mm. must just know Madison. Mm -hmm. These are things that we arrange behind the uh, you know, scenes. So then we will make arrangements to, with insurance companies, some of them within Zambia, some of them within uh, the continent. Uh, we have got some good reinsurance companies within Africa. Uh, 
Mm. But some are also sitting in Europe. We, 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 we arrange these facilities not just within Africa. We go outside, even to the European end market. Mm. Because like I would say that um, the way insurance works globally, there are these big companies that uh, some of them specialize maybe in aviation, some of them uh, will specialize in oil and gas. So when we bring all these on board, mm. that big risk actually will now be fully covered. So mm. what will happen? Should Zesco, in the example that I've given, suffer a 200 million you know, dollar loss? Mm. Obviously, then the whole chain, everyone had picked a share. Mm. Uh, we will get a loss adjuster to investigate and uh, confirm that that is indeed the loss. Mm. And then all the other insurance companies will also come to the party and uh, make those payments. That way, we will facilitate and we will have the ability and the capacity to be able to pay that $200 million, you know, um, uh, dollar claim. Mm. Um, I, I'm sure you remember the 2011 incident of the, those Twin Towers. Mm. Those were huge, you know, losses. You can imagine if that uh, um, that loss was, it doesn't matter even globally, mm. if you, you know, you know <laughs> big multinational insurance companies, mm. if one of them had picked up that and they didn't reinsure it, I think that by now we would just be saying there used to be this company because mm. it's not there anymore. We know that for a fact when those losses were paid, some of the ratings, uh, because they're big, mm. those were billions of dollars. Mm. Even their ratings you, you know, came down a bit. But the issue is that reinsurance is there to help us to make sure that we can take on board even these huge you know, risks that we, that we have and ensure that they are covered. Okay, um, I'm, 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 I, I'm sure we are running out of time, but just in conclusion, I'm not going to read all the messages, but maybe just uh, some uh, questions, even as we come to the concluding or the dying end of the program. Let me throw this to you, Pedifa. Um, someone wants to find out, uh, accident victims for an insurance company, do you pay accident victims? Like we've been seeing quite a number of accidents happening in the country. So they're trying to find out if you've insured your vehicle and then passengers are involved in an accident, does insurance company come in? And then also we've seen on some um, uh, buses like these big buses, when you buy a ticket, they'll indicate that damages and loss to property, the company will not be held accountable. So if that company is insured. Does insurance company come in to ensure that they compensate for the damages that has been caused by uh, the owner of the vehicle, who, of course, has insured their product? Okay, uh, again, to lay the foundation, and Mr. Massinger will come in because he's more from the underwriting mm. side. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, at the point of signing up for your insurance, what we call the scope of cover, which is the kind of incidents that can be covered because it's per event. Mm. So in this case, uh, the, if you sign up for third party insurance, for example, it will be tabulated what is covered in the third party. So if there are two vehicles involved, I'm the one with the insurance and I have third party, it means whatever happens to me, I'm not covered. It covers the third party. So the third party is the other person. Mm. And for some of, for most of the public vehicles, we find that they actually have third party, which covers the other, uh, the other party involved in that accident. But we do have what we call extensions. So extensions are add-ons to your policy, which, according to whatever you think may be required, you will be able to tell the insurance company to say, much as I have only subscribed for this. I think in case of another incident, I'd rather also add these uh, provisions or in case of another incident. So we are flexible enough to add certain things to your policy document depending on uh, what you think you may incur, uh, encounter. Uh, when it comes to the public vehicles, there are specific uh, uh, requirements that they may have because again, remember, it's a statutory requirement for everyone to have their cover. But the individuals may not get that direct uh, support depending on what cover uh, was was bought by the vehicle that they were in. Mm. I think Mr. Masi can elaborate. On okay, that. just 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 to add, yes. Um, so for public, uh, you know, vehicles like buses and what. So um, obviously, uh, you are working from the assumption of the law that. Uh, so if you get people. You know, on your bus, mm. I think you are responsible for their safety. Mm. Uh, so the driver may not necessarily be the, the the owner of the bus, but that is your employee. 
So that is why I think that it must start from there. You need to ensure that uh, you employ the right drivers who have the necessary qualification and experience, mm. you know, to, to, to drive those vehicles. And, and, and once in a while, I think you do your own, you know, internal uh, training where you sit and tell people why it is important that uh, we don't see this chaos that we see. I mean, you see bus drivers, he just overtakes and just gets in like that, that they can avoid those things. Mm. Yes, but the law requires that um, the owner of the bus uh, will have responsibility for the passengers. So if there's an accident, uh, then they take that responsibility. But if they have picked up, say, third party insurance, mm. yes, the insurance will provide payment to the passengers, but that will now be up to the limits of the law. Mm. Now, as we sit cur currently, uh, the law stipulates that uh, uh, you will pay uh, up to a maximum of 50,000 kwacha per person mm. and 100,000 per event. Now, the, the law lays out the minimum. But you as the owner of a bus, and you, it's maybe a 28-seater, a 32-seater, a 70 you know, passenger, you know, sitter. Mm. Uh, if, in, if you picked up the minimum insurance and there's only about 100,000 that is payable and, and you have a major incident or an accident, how much uh, of that 100,000 uh, are you going to pay? So it will definitely leave you with these serious gaps. Mm. And that is why then when we are talking to our clients like that, we will obviously advise them that there is need like uh, Penfa was, ex was talking about earlier, mm. to extend um, the limit per, per event, say from 100 to anything up to 1 million, 2 million. Mm. Or if they want also, they can extend that limit per person if it, from 50 uh, to say 100. But of course that requires that they pay an additional amount from what they would have paid for the, for the standard cover. But there's wisdom you know, in, uh, you know in, in, in doing that. Because that way, even if there are people who are seriously injured, some have died in terms of compensation. Because remember, uh, people that get on these buses are family people. Mm. Uh, some of them, they are busy doing what they are doing to try and ensure that they put uh, bread on the table, they take you know, children to school. Mm. Now, uh, if some of those are involved and they have died, mm. uh, we, we, we must be looking at these consequences. What will happen to the children? How do they go to school? Mm. So at least if the bus owner is able to extend those limits, the insurance company will do those compensations. Mm. At least you may meet some of the immediate you know, requirements or pay for children's uh, schools up to a certain level as people are trying to adjust. Mm. Now, one thing to understand is that uh, third party insurance is really legal liability. Mm. Now, if you have a small car and you've picked your family in there, and you are involved in an accident and because it was your negligence and even your members of the family, some have died, you know, others have, in, have gotten injured. The policy that you have will not compensate those passengers who are your family, you know, members. Remember, like I said, this is legal liability. Mm. Uh, you, you can't, your family members can't sue you. Mm. Uh, because of that, that particular accident and because of just that angle. Mm. So the insurance also will not be available to pay you know, family members. Also, if a company has a bus mm. where they carry employees, uh, whether it's to and from um, uh, the workplace oh, yes. or to go and do their work, and there is, uh, say, an accident, and the employees have been injured in that uh, bus uh, for, their, um, uh, for their employer, uh, there will be no benefit. Uh, there is an exception. Because it's taken that the in there are other insurance products that we have that the employer can pick up and ensure that uh, they cover their employees for those uh, misfortunes or accidents that will happen like that. So mm. I think it's just important that that is understood. 
I'm sure this topic would have required us to have more time because I can see even the numbers are still high for those who are following this program. And I'm sure a lot of people would have loved to hear more about the discussion of insurance. Insurance week and of course insurance is very important for every business regardless of a particular business that you do. Come TV just aired a story I think two weeks ago where a small business owner, the one who was repairing TV sets and uh, uh, radios and stuff had his shop burned and all the goods were burned and the owners of the properties were now bargaining him to say can you please give me back, back my property i brought it so that it can be fixed not so that it can completely be destroyed if you're a business owner what do you do in such a circumstance insurance is there for you and this is where insurance has to play its part so regardless of the business that you do insurance is here to give you a peace of mind and security so for me prudence chota and of course in studio i was joined by zisk director branch operation mr mizinga Masin, Masin, Masinja, and of course zisk life insurance communications manager penny fanurenda this is well, we have to end the program this morning keep watching Comedy tv thank you so much for those who kept us company and those who kept those messages coming from us here in studio the entire production tv uh, the entire Comedy tv production team it's bye for now and god bless you remember Comedy tv is not just another channel god bless you